See brown in your face. Have you heard of everything at once? Do you know about everything at once? It's internationally known. Aliens listen to it. It's the best. <laughs> if there's everything. something you're looking for in the 814, or feeling a little bored and think there ain't no more, no check more. out everything at once and allow it to be your source. It's that raw podcast that's always showing support, highlighting the scene. No need to take I-90 to peep or 79 to see how it be. Interviewing your locals with mindsets that are global. Innovators and creators on every single upload. So much going on in the EPA. Everything at once will keep you up to date. Amazing guests. What you doing? Come through and hang with Tony and Dave. Community driven. Bringing everything at once from around the way. Everything at once from around the way. Hey. Please listen. We love you. <laughs> everything at once. Everything at once. Hey, Dave. Uh, you ready for another podcast? Yeah, I guess. <sighs> Dang, man, you you sure you feeling okay? I don't know. I've just been tired and sluggish lately, and I just I just can't seem to get any energy. You really should have seen our last guest, Shantae, when she was here. She could have given you some direction. She's a board certified doctor of natural medicine. Do you think it's too late? Nah, man. You can give her a call. Her practice is called Sacred Divine Femininity. Sounds like that's for girls. It's not, man. She treats guys and girls. She takes a holistic approach towards health and well-being. You know, I think I'm going to give her a call. That's a good idea, dude. Okay. Hey, Tony. What's up, bud? Wow. Wow, Dave. You're looking a lot better. I'm feeling a lot better. Thank you so much for getting me in contact with Shantae. Yeah, Sacred Divine Femininity really seems like it did the trick for you. It really did. I'm ready to do the best podcast ever. Let's do it. Yeah! yeah. It's time to, int to introduce this show. The best show on the face of the planet. Welcome, everybody. Thank you all for tuning in today. We want to thank our Patreon producers, Brian G, Josh W, E and D, Nick G, and Sadie M. Patreon, it's an awesome way to support the show and say thanks. You can become a Patreon supporter by clicking the link below and choosing to be an intern, assistant, or producer level supporter. If being on the production team is too much pressure for you, you can also send any contributions using our Venmo at Everything at Once Studios. We now want to thank all the local businesses who supported this episode. These businesses get the Everything at Once stamp of approval and are critical members of the Everything at Once community. We couldn't do it without them. With winter approaching, are there any last minute details that you want to change or renovate around your home? Uh, I might, uh, but you know who to call. Yeah, Ghostbusters! No, no, Tony. No, not Ghostbusters. Solid State Construction. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Solid State. Yeah. Duh. <laughs> Solid State takes pride in all their home remodeling projects. Solid State specializes in bathroom remodeling, kitchen renovation, window and door installation, custom design work, and more, including painting, flooring, drywall, sidewall, decks. Decks. Get your free quote today by calling Nick at 814-397-7854. Solid people, solid, solid product, product, solid state construction. construction. You know, Tony, with all these renovations from solid state, I think we might have kicked up some bad energy around here. Yeah, oh, I, oh yeah. Luckily, we know just the people to go see. I, I know it this time. It's Ghostbusters. No, Tony. Our friends at Cauldron and Thorn. Wow. I feel really dumb right now, and I can't believe I didn't think of Cauldron and Thorn, uh, the world's largest witchcraft and metaphysical shop, with everything a person needs to channel the spirit world. Practice some self-care. Find enlightenment. Curse your enemies. Protect yourself from your enemies. Bless your friends. Cleanse your space from negative energies. You can check out all the magical wares available at these for these different practices, we all love and enjoy at Cauldron and Thorn, 2724 West 8th Street, or online at cauldronandthorn.com. This week, we have an incredible guest for you. 
Hola. Are we doing this? Yes. We're doing it now. Oh, it's happening now. Yes. It's okay. happening now. Oh, hi. Oh, hi. <laughs> the show must go on, Colleen. Hi. How are you guys doing? Good. Bien. 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 Muy bien. Oh, okay. Muy bien. Um, See, this is Espanol episode. Damn it. Day. I, I even took Spanish, too, and I couldn't think of any response to that. Spanish. Espanol dos. Espanol dos, yes. <laughs> See. I was Concha. Was See. my name in class. <laughs> Crystal ball. Say De Niro. No, I'm just kidding. All right. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Anyways. Serious stuff. Colleen, you are our leading lady in Caranormal, and this is our – we're going to recap. We're going to recap the production. We're going to recap you and your life and everything that's going on post Caranormal. All right. So, like, my first question, I guess, for you was why would you ever get involved in – this movie with us who have never done anything like this before um wholeheartedly and with the commitment and vigor that you came at this role with well well, thank you for that Mm -hmm. um no i was super excited to do this um i remember actually dave and i talking about a potential um plot for a movie that you wanted to write and do you remember that night and i went and my my trunk was open anyways uh, he talked about some things that happen that do happen in the movie and it being a premise for a movie. And I just, I love psychological thrillers. It's always been my favorite genre of anything. Huge fan. Um, so when I knew that was what the premise was, I was so excited uh, to be a part of that. And I've never done film. So I was just super honored to be a, not only to be a part of it, but to be the main character. Um, I've only done theater. I'm even relatively new to that. So I was just fucking pumped to do, to do anything. Film. Yeah, to do films. No so. consideration of our skill level no, or ability. No, I didn't give a shit. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, well, it, it, it took the pressure Smart. off because it was like, it, it was, we, this was like our baby. It was all of mm-hmm. our babies. You right, know what I mean? For sure. With the exception of, you know, like Jesse, Adele, and Matt, like this was all of our first times doing this kind of work. So uh, for a lot of us, it was, you know, just kind of diving it. Oops. No, oh, it's okay. <laughs> diving in the deep end and uh, just seeing where it went. Just going yeah. for it. Yeah. That's what we were all doing. That's what it was all about. Mm-hmm. And I feel like it's okay to announce now that like it's definitely not much of a horror. I feel like that's part of the reason. Big news, everybody. We've been rejected by every <laughs> film competition that we've entered. But you know what? You know what? You know what? That is the sign of an artist. Yeah, every artist has been rejected over and over again. It's a first movie. It's our first movie. And I feel we entered in like a bunch of horror like film festivals. And I feel like maybe we're not quite horror-y enough. I'm going to say that that's really it. Like we made an awesome movie. It was incredible, amazing, mind-blowing, all that shit. But it wasn't... The scare. It wasn't horror. Right. Really. It was more like... Psychological Dra- thriller. Drama, drama, psychological thriller, yeah. Absolutely. No, I, I said the same thing. I was like, it's not scary enough. That's why it's, you know, which I mean, I'm all about because I don't, I'm not a huge, well, no, I'm not a fan at all of like gory, just like slasher. Like I'm not into that. And Monster it's so funny horrors. Because for some reason, because I have tattoos, people just like ascribe all these things to me. Of like, course. oh, you, you must really be into. You do metal vocals, dude. Yeah. You love horror movies. Exactly. Oh, you were in a metal band. So you must love all this fucked up shit and i do like some fucked up shit but uh yeah like slasher horror movies hate them hate Ooh. them hate them don't like them um so when yeah so that's why i was even more excited when you were like a thriller i was like yeah yeah so, we we really tried our best to avoid that that was like one of dave's things when he was writing the script one of the like commands that i gave was like we can't we don't know what the fuck we're doing we can't do special effects so right. we can't do gore or anything like that and i right. think that our the premise that we came up with kind of reflected and that, that was that was an interesting uh wrinkle difficulty in the script from the beginning that we talked about you know and hashed out was like we need to make this good we need to make it effective but we cannot do anything too super difficult like cinematographically yeah in the we can't do the gore or the cgi or any of any that. of that like right. beca- and uh so we knew from the very beginning, and I'm going to give you some praise here. We knew from the very beginning that the writing, the directing, and even more so than that, just like the strength of the acting in the movie is what was going to carry it. 
In some movies, that's not the case. You could have, like, your, like, Michael Bay movies that are, like, you know, James Cameron movies that the acting sucks, but there's so much cool, like, special effects going on. It carries it. Right. You did a fucking fantastic oh. job. All of our bringing actors out did. Car- yeah. Everybody yes. did. Yes. They, well, thank you for yeah. that. I appreciate that. Yeah. It was, it was the big point. It was definitely the story and the acting that needed to carry this movie. It was going to be successful for sure. And uh, it turned out great. I feel like when we had like the pseudo final script like it was it was a strong script you know what i mean it oh. was good for everybody to to work on and i think that there were plenty of part well maybe not plenty of parts but because we tried to keep it like minimal but the parts that were in it were all like substantial you Absolutely. know what i mean oh yeah and i i mean i loved the script you know from day one and i just loved that it wasn't because i think a lot of times you'll see that with you know people who are just starting out they just kind of recycle some movie they've already seen mm-hmm. and i just felt like this was something i had never seen before um you know maybe some topics but like not not really i mean i also am like known for being that person who's like you've never seen that and i'm like yeah, I no i've never seen that um so i am that person but w- regardless of that i i felt like this was a very original idea and premise and yeah so i was super stoked to play that out and hope people enjoyed it yeah i think it was it was a super original premise i don't remember exactly how we came up about it with it together um it was like after the movie after we went and saw the oddity productions Mm -hmm. movie and we just started spitballing after that and i'd been listening to like a podcast about froggers or something i'm like dude this is what we do you were talking oh no go ahead oh no uh, actually, I totally forgot what I was going to say. Okay. No. <laughs> Go ahead. So we were talking, from how I remember it, you brought up uh, the that you'd been watching documentary on Froggers or documentaries on Froggers. And I was reading, at the exact same time, this uh, book by a journalist who had grown close to the women that were involved in the Manson family murders. Mm. And they did this thing where... They called it, Manson had them do this thing called creepy crawly missions where they would go into people's houses who had like the windows open in California, whatever, and they would move like a lamp like six or seven inches and then that's all they would do. Mm -hmm. And it was just like the convergence of what both of us, like the media were consuming at the time. Yeah. Yeah. It ended up being, getting sculpted into something really cool and it wasn't exactly like my idea of what i had wanted from the beginning either you know what i mean you Mm kind of took it your own route and i think it worked out well given the the stipulations that we placed on it from the beginning other than the length yeah the length i we failed we failed at the length we're like we're gonna make like a 10 20 minutes oh did you really want it to be that's how it was supposed to be short (laughs) but like i don't know yeah that's probably another reason why we're getting rejected by a lot of uh (laughs) Uh, uh, competitions too because we are like they're like I'm not trying to watch this. They are, <laughs> we are the long. very like tail end of everybody's like short story like uh, guidelines. You know what I mean? Like or short film guidelines. Most are like ten to twenty minutes. Right. And is it like are, fifty five and under? Yeah. Short film. Yeah. Okay. Fifty five like and under. <laughs> we're forty seven. Yeah. Oh yeah. shit. Yeah, yeah forty seven. And most short films that go into competitions are like ten to twenty, and the upper limit is like usually between forty five and fifty five, depending. My, so there were a lot of them too that were just like twenty minute was our right. Maybe they didn't even get to see the whole thing. Maybe, maybe they were just didn't like, watch you know it. what? I'm I'm done. They watched they like, twenty minutes and were like, "Fuck this movie!" Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I, I just everything's digital now, so it's not, like not the same. But like, I get the image of like, open it, put it in. 47 minutes just pop it back out and throw <laughs> it in the yeah, trash no, like, <laughs> sorry if it was a DVD. we'll give you five <laughs> yeah exactly you know uh, which gets us like through the opening credits maybe well it was it's like a challenge for me because and i've talked with tony about this i don't know if i've talked about it with you but like my favorite types of movies are like are ones most of the time that are just like based in like the the just like the common like you know normal life you know it's nothing extravagant it's just like carried by like dialogue and like you know a a good story so that's why it ended up being so long is like that's the kind of stuff i like where it's just like you know just very like nothing 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 in the extreme exactly right 
And I feel like it does a good job of building like drama and intensity throughout it. So like, I don't have any regrets about it being longer and I wouldn't change that. But like, I think that's also like another point, like maybe that's why we didn't get into any competitions. Right. But if you and also that. like for this next one where I'm, we need to stick for the next movies or the next series or whatever we're calling it, we need to stick to like 10 to 20 minutes at the most, 20 mm -hmm. minutes at the most, really like 10 minutes. But I think that there's like a lot of short films and like 10 minute stories that can really get a lot accomplished. You know what I mean? For sure. And it has to go straight to the like meat. You know what I mean? Straight right. to the like whatever the tension. It starts like in the middle. You know what I mean? And right. climaxes very quickly. No, Rather there's there's no way that this could have been a you know a stereotypical short film because I, I feel like this should have been a feature length because yeah like there we could have so went much, longer yeah like there was so much detail that you put into it that like nobody which I think is a cool thing to talk about because like there's so much about the storyline like there's questions that I still want to ask you um which I don't know if I can like say them on here or not yeah um but like there's so many like like of just backstory that I'm like mm -hmm. well what what happened to this person what 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 was their story what was you know and I think there were so many things that could have been touched on had we had more time to do yeah, you know for sure. so like yeah you, there was just you were very detailed in the premise and the script and the characters and their backstories and yeah we could have just made it longer i but, agree i feel like this could have easily been like double the length it could mm -hmm. very possibly be eventually because what nobody has seen except for me is like when and I, all you people now and all you people now <laughs> these guys haven't seen it like because i never showed it to them because when i originally wrote the script there was more scenes in it but i was like this is too long i was oh. like there's too much going on here like i need to cut it down a little bit you mm -hmm. know and uh from my understanding a lot of not all the time but a lot of the time with short films you can do like it doesn't always have to tell the whole entire story like i've i've learned that people that make short films a lot of times almost use it as like an extended trailer to hope it gets picked up so that they can right. make the feature film out of it right mm -hmm. a little teaser yeah. yeah like 20 minutes 10 20 minutes of like getting in to like a pivotal moment you know what i mean that could lead to other moments and have a lot leading up to that moment you know what i mean mm -hmm. Um, and I think that's cool. One of the cool things that I like about short films is that it leaves a lot to people to interpret and to make up their own story too. You know what I mean? Like the people that have seen Kara Normal may have their own ideas of Kara and what happened to her and how she got to where she was and how things ended after the movie ends. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And tons of people have brought up the, like, so many people want, like, a spinoff or a Caranormal 2. <laughs> like, so yeah. many people. That's, like, a really common, like... Well, that's good to hear. No, that, it's great. It's that, it's that awesome. But there won't be a Caranormal 2. There yeah. will not be a Caranormal yeah. 2. If there is, it won't be it for won't. a very long time. And it'll be, le I, fi I, I would rather do, like, a Caranormal feature. Than or a like a, I would or a prequel or a prequel yeah. or a prequel could be good too but that's like a sign that you did something right like that's very common especially in the internet age uh, even before it but even more prevalent now that like if people really like your stuff they make their fan fiction about it right. you know like right. take their own spins on it so like you guys out there you can write your own fan fiction we'd be flattered don't go too far uh, we're not. We're probably Dave's not very protective of his stories, so yeah. don't fuck with it. Yeah, yeah. Don't don't go and make something. <laughs> I will sue you if you try to make your own movie. Uh, <laughs> copyrighted. That's the C right there. But you know, you you can you can go on the interwebs and blogs and send us fan fiction if you'd like. We probably won't make a movie about it, but we we are flattered. Yes, absolutely. Well, I did. I only say this to you. I'm not sure which I don't know why I'm even saying this because it's not going to make any sense because I'm not giving anything away. But there is a movie that just came out and there's a scene in that movie. Oh, yeah. That I was like, holy shit. We came out first. Well, so people, no yeah, people have already seen it. So you can talk oh. about this. Oh, well. Everybody's seen the trailer. Oh, that's true. Well, but they might not have seen the other movie. Oh, they might not have you know seen what I mean? the other I don't movie. want that yeah. to give that away. But well, there's a scene in Beetlejuice <laughs> that <laughs> yeah. that's a lot like our opening scene. 
Yes. Yes. And I, I was in the theater, and I literally leaned over, and I was like, this is paranormal. But, I mean, thank God we came out first, so no one can say yeah, we copy off that. Yeah, fuck you, yeah. Tim Burton, <laughs> you lying, yeah. cheating, stealing son of a bitch. Yeah. Uh, I haven't seen Beetlejuice, but that's really cool. I'd like to see it. Oh, so I didn't of... say it to you. Did I only say no, it to you? Yeah, you, you texted it to me. Oh, okay. No, I think you, I think you put it in... Oh, our group, group chat. Right, I did. Yeah, I so did. I did oh, see yeah. that. I knew what you were talking about, but I haven't seen Beetlejuice yet. But that's really cool because there's been so many times in my life, I don't know if this has happened to you guys, where you, you like come up with this idea or this premise and then you see someone else do it yep. and you're like, I knew it was a good idea. Story right. of my life. Yeah. Everything I've invented. I feel like, like yeah. I feel like that happens a lot, and I feel like that happens a lot in movies. Like, I'll see a bunch of movies that come out that are all kind of similar, weirdly. You know what I mean? Interestingly enough, uh, it was Tony's idea, 100% not mine, but the, the name of the whole studios here comes or is from a movie. A movie. Yeah, it's yeah. inspired by the movie. Every, every, what's Everything, it? everywhere, all at once. Uh, if you haven't seen it yet, it's so good. No. It's a good movie. Is it, it, is it a thrill? It's good. It, yeah, I guess so. I mean, you it's like a, a psychological drama, I'm into like it. maybe paranormal sci-fi <laughs> action. It's like literally everything at once. Okay. Like yeah. everything, everywhere, all at once. It was, it, it. I thought it was such a good movie because it took you on such a roller coaster of emotions all over the place. Like every, it, it hits on so many different things that I. It's I a really very cool liked movie. It. Yeah. You have to like send me a link. I want to watch it. I think yeah. it's on Netflix. I think it's okay. on Netflix. Oh okay. Yeah. Netflix or Hulu. One of the one of the big streaming providers definitely has it now. It's oh, super nice. super good. Um, won an Oscar last year. And oh, wait, how do I know about this? It's about uh, like an Asian family. Okay. That run a laundromat. First em generation immigrants. It's really good. Okay. It's a good movie. Let's super super good. And uh, yeah, it, we need good enough that I named our podcast and yeah. studio and production company after it. Now. That's funny. I, I never. That's a question I've never asked you. Is where you came up with that name. So I now think, I know. <laughs> I think. I think maybe on our first episode, while we were trying to feel out what we we're doing, it was literally just Tony and I talking to ourselves. It might have came up. I think that's the <laughs> only time that we've ever talked about it. Maybe. Uh, no, I no. feel like I've definitely mentioned it in other podcasts. That's been a while. Yeah, okay. probably haven't talked about it in a while. Know. But that is where it came from. What did you think <laughs> about do, the doing production the way that we did? Oh. I think this entire experience was such a learning experience yeah. for all of us. Um, Four days, sun up, sun down, Friday to Sunday, and then one weekend afterwards. Unreal. I mean, I am obviously, uh, you know, a lot of things could have been done differently and better. You know, we for sure th this was a learning experience. But I think considering this was all of our first times doing this, like. We That's, did a fucking awesome job. Right. I, I completely agree. And especially under the time constraint, uh, just you know, working with, you know, people that are very new to acting, um, you know, new to directing, new to, you know, new to everything. Um, it was a huge accomplishment to do that in four fucking days. Four days. Four goddamn days. Uh yeah. People so, spend four days making like a 20 minute short. Yeah. Right, right. I do have to say, I think we, I can speak for all of us. And he was mentioned earlier. This is where I hope you listen to this episode. But huge fucking shout out to Jesse James. Because like, it he's wasn't. He's an OG. It he was, was he's fucking an, cool as a cucumber the whole he, time. He's and crushing an, it. He's an OG. He had so much experience. Like when we were like, you know, Tony would be like, I, I, I like to have this effect, you know, whatever. He was, he had fucking everything. He's like, don't worry, I got you. And he wasn't initially like, it wasn't like from the very beginning, he was like, I'm on this movie. It was just something that he was able to help us out. And he did. And he's the fucking man. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Originally, I was just, I just like messaged him like, yo, do you have like an extra camera I could borrow? You know what I mean? And I was going to, I was like teaching Dave how to do camera stuff. And then I don't know, like a month before or whatever, I text him and he's like, yeah, dude, I, I want to help you guys out with this. So I'm going to be there. And he brought himself which is uh, a huge thing that. like a ton of gear and lights and his camera and all sorts of shit and it just like took us to 
a higher, mm. much higher level of production and cinematography than we would have been able to achieve by ourselves. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and not to like talk us down, but I mean, let's just be real. Yeah. Well, well dude, he's a he's a gangster. And it, it was he's a, literally Emmy award winning. Literally yes. Emmy <laughs> yeah. award winning, which makes which which makes such a big difference because like it was. You know, anytime you got a big production and everybody, like, is putting their everything into it, there's stress. And there's me who, like, over the period of, like, the last two years, Tony has, like, taught himself and, like, turned into, like, a very, very proficient, like, multimedia artist and and, uh, producer or whatever. I have not picked up on that side, and he was teaching me how to do stuff. And I don't, like, we would have been pushed to the absolute... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> breaking point maybe if it was me filming with you like yeah. just because i hadn't done it before and things were so time constrained like so huge shout out to jesse like for preserving the spirit of everything yes at once. <laughs> for sure yeah, absolutely. no you would have been fine though dave we would yes. not have had as many like fancy and cool angles and cool shots as we did oh, but absolutely. you would have been okay like hitting the record button and getting the camera there where no, it needed to be. That was, no, for, I mean, and of course I'm going to do a huge shout out to my boyfriend, Matt Boland, for doing the score and doing... The audio, yeah. And dude. having his arms like this for four days straight All and day. doing the booms. Yeah. Um, no, I think he did a phenomenal job and I I was so excited to no be doubt. able to do something together and I thought the song he wrote for it was just fucking killer. I, yeah. I still have it in my head sometimes. Um, I love just watching the beginning of the movie just to hear that song sometimes. Um, so I'm really proud of him for for doing that um because i mean as obviously he's been a musician for 20 plus years but that was his first time doing anything on a movie so like that was his you know so he got a really cool you know new experience right. doing that and he was doing it with like uh not ideal shit next movie we will have i will have ideal shit right yeah. right and so yeah like i said learning experience i yeah. mean i definitely <laughs> uh i mean i'm also like my harshest critic but it, I got over it, but like the first time I watched the movie, I was like, <laughs> yeah, like I just, cause I've never watched myself mm-hmm. act. Like I, you know, I was in band, so I've heard my own voice screaming. <laughs> um, I've, I, I've no, no one's ever filmed any play that I've ever been in. So I've never mm-hmm. seen myself act before. And there were just things that thank God I did this film because there were things I was like, Oh oh god like that's bad like you need like, here's things you need to work on um, right. to be a better actor and i can and that's like, how we did our rehearsals too which i think was really helpful oh for a definitely lot of people. well and that's the thing is that I, it was helpful but i feel like i needed to see myself on screen to really yeah. know what i needed to work on mm-hmm. and it was different doing readings and stuff in here too than like actually like on the set like right. moving around and all that stuff oh totally because i think too you know Everyone was probably like tired from work. We were kind of just kind of like mumbling, not mumbling, but you know, talking. Yeah, we were just trying to get through. reps in, right? Exactly. And so once I watched it, I was like, okay, this is okay. I mean, on my, completely my end. I'm like, this is okay, but ooh, that, that's cringy. Oh, that's cringy. Um, you know, just well, keep yourself together. I, you guys, all, I almost started like a small like uprising in the group chat after I watched the first rough cut and I'm like guys this is fucking horrible I know I was like god damn it Tony why are you saying this I'm like, the leader of this don't tell us it's I was terrible. like this is so bad I just watched it and I fucking hate it dude mm. everybody's like what I, oh my god I can't believe it and I'm like no it's probably actually fine I'm just very critical of myself I wanted I, to die when you texted us that I was like no you're yeah. not you're the one who's supposed to say it's good yeah. I, I feel like all of us had that moment so like, Linda had to tell me that like a thousand fucking times too like I still don't know if I believe her but like every time I would be like you want to check it out you want to see it you want to check out this new cut she would always be like yes and then I'd be like oh if she, I would be done and she's like it's really good and I'm like uh no it's not yeah. well yeah. that's the thing because you're always going to have people that are just gonna say nice things no matter what because they mm-hmm. love you and they don't want to hurt your feelings. And then you have people. <laughs> we haven't had. I don't think I've had like a, one single person really say anything negative about it. I have. Um, uh, uh, but me too. What did they say? Me too. I don't. Wanna, Who was I, I it? Wanna, I'll go fight them. I don't no, want to blast kidding. that on here. Um, but no, it's. <laughs> There's nothing quite like someone giving you a bunch of critiques when you didn't ask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, <laughs> um, like, that's the thing. Like, I think with critiquing, it's it's kind of like, oh, shit, sorry. I keep bumping into every- I'm it's so okay. goddamn I'm still clumsy. trying to, like, figure out the appropriate setup for these new <laughs> mic stands and how, the, how to get them so they're not in everybody's way. I'm just gangly. Um, <laughs> but, 
yeah, it, I don't know. It irked yeah. me a little bit, but it was also well, one of those I, things where I had to be like, okay, Colleen, if like you want to. Oh no, the chair is in the way. Oh, we're good. No, I, I just got to stop moving my arms so much. Um, but it was definitely like, I even had a conversation with Matt, like immediately after someone had said something that hurt my feelings. And he was like, you want to be an actor? Like you need thick skin. Right. Like you oh, can't be, sure. getting, you can't be getting butt hurt over someone who's yeah. not even an actor. Well, when I brought it to Matt for the rough cut, he's like, all oh, these things need to get fixed. And I was like, dude, fuck you. I've been working like a thousand mm-hmm. hours on this, like in my head. Right. Like, I didn't tell him to fuck himself. I was definitely a little bit like uh, resistant, I guess, mm-hmm. to his critiques or whatever. But I was also like, I just got done like spending 40 mm-hmm. hours in like three days putting this together. The, the, so He's probably more, I wasn't there. He's probably, you know, a little more to the point than I am. I'm like more like mellow, like, oh, let's see, you know, how it works, you know, not try to rock the boat. But the very first time we watched the cut, it's like out of character for me. I was like, oh, maybe like this part, you maybe we should do this, you know, and like, like the real gentle, like, you know, like let's make some alterations or whatever. Uh, but it's weird. I had exactly one, I'm not going to talk about it here either, but I had exactly one person out of everybody that like, just like sent me a message with like the criticisms, but I was like, thank you. I well, was like, thank you, you know? Like, nobody's... T- I, honestly, I would like to hear some criticism because, like, that's how I'm going to see things to get better, you know what I mean? No, absolutely. Uh, and I think, like, you important. know, when you were saying about, Agreed. you know, the first cut and, like, Matt coming to you, I think during production, I think constructive criticism is essential because you right. don't want to just, like, put out a shit product. But, like, I'm not saying it was, but, like, you know, just in general, I think during production, you absolutely need people to step up and be like, no, say this can be yeah. better. Um but it's, it's the – once it's already done, there's nothing that can be done about it. It's one of those things where it's like unless – you know, if, someone, if someone's critiquing you or critiquing you, unless you are a director, unless you are a writer, unless you are an actor, politely fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> like, like you can tell me your criticisms, but like they're not going to carry – I'm not going to let them carry weight on me. Mm-hmm. But if you, are an, if you are a fellow actor and you want to give me critiques, please give me critiques because mm-hmm, right. I need that to grow. And I think that's where I got a little like – bitey about someone coming at me because i was just like you know what you're fucking talking about yeah mm. but, exactly uh, but i but i was one of those things where i had to be like no this yeah i need to have a thick skin and go th- this person's opinion oh my god this person's mm-hmm. opinion does not you know is not everyone's opinion is right. not doesn't de- you know define who i am as an actor so i mean it's yeah. such it's such a like for all of us not just in this because you know, like you said you've done you know theater and you know Tony does a lot of like, you know, photos, photos and stuff that he puts out and we do the podcast and we did this movie and it's like when you're an artist or you're a person that is putting out yourself out to the public, like it's kind of, I mean, at least for me, like it's kind of scary at first when you're like first getting into it because you just expose yourself to criticism from everybody. And usually the, like you were saying, almost like good criticism that is like technical yeah. and constructive from someone that like has walked in your shoes is never going to hurt your feelings. It's just a random person that doesn't know what they talk they're talking about and maybe like needle in on something that you're already like self-conscious about and you're just like <laughs> damn, what am I doing with my life? But you got to you got to fuck it. You got to push through it. Right. Yep. Like you hit the needle on the head cuz they said something that I was like Oh, and like my soul died a little bit um but i had to just be like no what why are you letting this person do this to you um but yeah it's uh oh man there's so there's this like motivational speaker lady um that is not her title um are you familiar with brene brown no um no. well the story's going nowhere um she's a motivational speaker and writes books but she has a whole like analogy about being on the field and people that are in the audience right and like if you're not out on the field like you said being vulnerable exposing yourself doing the big things like don't take criticism from the people that are just sitting in the audience like they don't fucking know what it's like to be to be in the arena i think the arena i think that's her analogy for sure um Mm -hmm. yeah so i think i had to remember that like okay unless you're in the arena with me you know, doing these things or, or attempting to do these things, striving, uh, your words are just, you know, um, not a big deal. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You have to just let them roll off your back or else it will, especially someone who like is working on having higher self-confidence, like 
if I let that shit get to me, like it's just gonna go downhill from yeah. there. Mm-hmm. And that goes for everybody who's like new to some, you know, uh, new to some medium um, that they're doing, working on new passion project or, you know, just a lifestyle change that they want to do. Um, yeah, yeah. You have to not let the haters get to you. No, <laughs> for sure. But I, I, I don't know. I didn't really have any, I didn't get any haters. So I guess it's a unique, well, other than like the best haters, the best hater was probably Matt and he, I wouldn't really consider him a hater at all because like he was just trying, I mean, he, he's in just as invested as we are, as I am in this to making it good. And he wants to, you know, help me refine and make things better you know what i mean but that was really the only person that i've gotten any critical feedback from um one of the reviewers did give me a little bit of critical feedback but it was mostly just that like the intro scene was kind of long and that we should have just done the sponsor and stuff Mm -hmm. at the end which is like understandable and stuff but i also like wanted to really be uh uh, show as much gratitude as I could for our sponsors that helped make this possible. You know right, what I mean? By right. giving them that big segment, like right in the very beginning where everybody's going to be watching. Um, because like without them, like, I mean, we could have done it, but like it, uh, it was really helpful. You know what I mean? It just would have cost me money instead of, uh, being funded, you know what oh, I mean? Yeah. Oh, for sure. I mean, we just weren't in the position we had, a bunch of awesome people a lot of them showed up at the premiere that uh uh yeah contributed to the indiegogo so like thank you all for yeah. that yeah, so, for so sure. much yeah, because you made it a reality but like yeah. we were a very low budget film extremely so, like, extremely low budget. a shoestring <laughs> budget film so like those are just concessions that you have to make like when you got like big sponsors like that you know you, I, I agree with you you know it might seem a little weird because usually in movies you don't see that kind of stuff till the end at all, if at all. But if like, at all, like or like they're in the movie somehow. You know what I mean? Like pep, there's a Pepsi can or something like that. But we didn't really have any sponsors that were Pepsi or anything like that that we could do like that we could include like in the right. movie. Really, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I, it was important to me to make sure that we like showed as much gratitude and gave them as much like respect and. Well, we did have the Keystone detail card. Yeah, we did have that. We did have that. Well, Mm -hmm. I guess we could have shown brouhaha. We could have had somebody. Yeah, we could have had a brouhaha, but we would have had to change the name and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, never mind. That would totally screwed up. (laughs) We could have put somebody in a solid state construction t-shirt for sure. (laughs) That's true. Are we sure that one of the characters in the movie doesn't have a solid state tattoo? Oh, that's true. (laughs) I don't think he would have been appropriate for him to show it. No, uh, Scott. Oh, the deacon. Yeah, yeah. He oh, has he a does. solid state tattoo. Oh, I'm assuming it's not somewhere. It's like he... on his oh. shoulder, I think, oh, okay. or on his chest. One of the two. Yeah. yeah. So that could have could... been a good like. When, he's, when, like... He's, when he's scared. Just... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. His shirt flies off. So right. <laughs> that would have been funny. That would have been hilarious. Uh, maybe that. Maybe the next movie we make or the movie that we make that's a comedy, we can incorporate something like that into it. Mm -hmm. There was so much funny shit happening on set. I feel like, yeah, that could have easily just turned into a comedy. I mean, especially with Roy on there. He was so funny. (laughs) He was crushing it. He was crushing it. He's a hilarious dude. Uh, If anybody's getting a spinoff, it's him. Oh, my god, Matt, if you're listening, you would probably be my favorite character to one of my favorite characters to work with again oh and to make a spinoff it's me fun. and dave talked we it's had so like a long like conversation about it yeah and like literally while shooting like we talked like we talked like this should be a spinoff and then after the premiere a few people came up and were like you should do a spinoff with the cops. with him and and Tommy. he has so mm-hmm. many funny little things even in mm-hmm. the movie that like if you're paying attention you're just like oh my god this is fucking hilarious yeah like there's a part where he's like running and he's like holding his gun like coming <laughs> up to you <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's about to fucking shoot you <laughs> So many, rope, like, and it's like one totally. look at the end of a, a scene before we transition he just like raises his eyebrow it's fucking <laughs> hilarious oh yeah so He's... funny and like that was one of the things that i appreciated about the premiere too is that like people were laughing you know what i mean like yes. a lot of us and like other people that like know the different characters and the different people that were in the movie were like fucking laughing and we're like yeah dude like that's how it's not like funny, but it's like how you know that they're doing a good job portraying something that's completely different.
different from who they normally are. I was super relieved at the premiere when people were laughing at things that I didn't even realize. Like, oh yeah, that is kind of funny. Like, I t- you had to like take yourself out of it and like look at it from a, a viewer's perspective. And I totally wasn't in that headspace. So like when I heard people giggling, I was like, oh yeah, I guess that is like a little funny. And like there was, and I was just so relieved because my worst fear, and I'm sure I said this to Dave a million times, was that people were going to laugh at things because they were bad. Like, right. I was so nervous that I was going to get like, we were going to get like, you know, bad laughs. Like right. this is like, oh God, this is so bad. It's funny. And I was like, as long as nobody does that, I won't start crying. Right. <laughs> so, so this is a, this is a, a confession um, Ooh, that okay. I've been holding to myself. But uh, maybe for, like, the first, like, ten minutes of the movie before I started hearing, like, those laughs and, like, people getting into it in a good way. Like, Tony was up front. I don't know where you were at. I was dead center in the front. Dead center in I the front. I was, like, in the middle, yeah. Yeah, so you guys were up front. Matt uh, was in the back, like, with the projector mm-hmm. and stuff. And I sat at the merch table and I was like, my anxiety just about the whole thing. Room. Like, I was just like, I had seen the movie. I knew what the movie was. So I was like, very intentionally, like, not watching it at first. And then I heard people like laughing, and I was like, oh, okay. And I like got up and went and stood with Matt and watched the rest of the movie back there. But at the very beginning of the movie, I was like, I can't do it. I can't. Like, this stress was it. so much. Oh, I, yeah. I was having a panic attack. Like, I remember sitting in my seat like this, like as low as I possibly <laughs> yeah. could go because I was so afraid of people, you know, just. You know, not not because I thought it was bad, but just because, like, it's very vulnerable. It's super vulnerable. It's, what did you, you know? guys think about my speech? I never asked, like, anybody what they thought about it. But I, like, thought about that for probably, like, the week prior to the premiere. I didn't hear your speech at the beginning because our wonderful, one of our other wonderful actors, Blair, got there late. Oh, and yeah. I had to let him in. Oh. And he was, like, down the street at the other entrance to feed. So I had to, like, call him down. And by the time we got back in, you were just wrapping it up. Yeah. Um, so I, with the premiere, I feel like we could have done more with that. I, yeah. I w- that was something I, I was a little, I don't know. I think because, so like, and this was also my fault because I like ran away as soon as you called us up. <laughs> But um, I think feel like we could have planned it to be more of an event than just like a viewing of a movie. Like, yeah. it, you know, like maybe had gotten there, you know, early, maybe like decorated it, had um, like the way for Tethered, like we did like a full panel of like all the actors. And then we did all the, you know, the producers, the creative team and had people ask questions. And like, I think that would have been a really cool thing for us to do. So I think like, it was something I never thought of beforehand, but then right. once we left, I was like, shit, we could have done a lot with this evening that we didn't do. So, um, that was my Next only time. like, yeah, right. Like that was just kind of like a, an afterthought. I was like, oh, right. crap. A lot of people really loved it too afterwards. Like so many mm-hmm. people were just like, "This yeah. was fucking yeah, so oh absolutely, good. absolutely." That yeah, was just, it, yeah, it was like uh, the exact opposite from the beginning. When I I don't get like too like egomaniacal. I can get like that, you know. But like the when a couple people, it was only two, but when a couple people came up and were like, "Sign this movie poster," I was like, eh, "I think I will." <laughs> like, <laughs> you're goddamn right. Like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then a bunch of people afterwards too. That was crazy. Yeah, I was like, that's it. I, I can't believe people like bought the posters too. Like afterwards. Well, the posters were super. Everything was, but I especially like the posters. The poster was fucking dope. That made us look official as fuck when I put that together. And I was looking at that picture. I was like, holy shit, this is fucking. This could be like on the wall at Tinseltown. Uh, yeah. That was the most, sur- probably the most surreal moment of my life was walking into a building and seeing my face on a projection screen. Yeah. I remember I leaned over to Heather was sitting next to me and I was like, is this what it's like to have a wedding? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like, is this my wedding day? <laughs> like, I've never had like, I don't know, just like a big me on a wall <laughs> and people coming to see something that I'm in. Like it just felt very foreign to me. For those living under a rock, who haven't seen on our social media the uh, picture that we're talking about. So th- we have many great actors in this movie, but the the movie poster is just a close-up of Colleen, like, up against a wall, and it's just her face. So, like, she is the whole movie poster, and it's a, it, it's a fucking awesome picture, like... Well, and something that nobody knows unless they were there, which was would have been, I think, just me and you and you... Probably it, was late, it was late at night. Yeah. So what's cool, and, and then Matt, if you look Matt. closely at the picture, which I, I had, I only, I only noticed like later on. 
um, we had just filmed a crying scene. And then you're like, I'm going to take your picture. And I was like, what? Um, and I thought it was just like, oh, like for pictures to have, you know, I had no idea you were going to turn that into a poster. Um, and I remember I had just gotten done bawling in bed. And then you're like, oh, come out. And it was, it was dark out. It was night. It was the very end of like the first long day of shooting. And you're like, yeah, just put your hand against the wall. Look over here. And if you look at the poster, like you can, there is still a tear just sitting mm -hmm. in yeah. my deep ass fucking bags. Under my eyes. <laughs> and I'm like, that's fucking nuts that like you captured that. Like, and we didn't even mean to do that. And yeah. it was just still sitting there. Perfect. <laughs> like, yeah, I, that is I, not Photoshop I, editing yeah. tricks. No, that's a real, that's yeah. a real yeah. last picture. Here. Yeah. Yeah. My, my only regret is on that night, just because, you know, there were so many people talking to us and we had to clean up a little bit and all this stuff, is that I did not get my poster that I bought signed by, by everybody. By everybody. I wanted to have oh, like a, yeah. I should honestly, if I would, I should have thought about having like a signing party where we signed all the posters pretty much before oh, yeah. like we started selling them but see all the, the learning experience like right, i right. said all of this is just one big learning experience next time we have a and i won't talk about what it's for but maybe next time we do one you know like sign like a poster when we do it if we do a silent auction we actually like have to do it yeah not just be like oh we're gonna do a silent auction and then it's just like chaos and everybody's talking yeah. and you know whatever. well uh, low-key i really wanted to keep the fucking painting, i know so. you did well, that's, I was just going to ask. I was like, wait, nobody got that right. I, I kept did. it. Nobody yeah. did. Okay. Yeah. So nobody bit. Okay. I was like, did people know about that? I was okay. like this. Yeah. It was kind of last minute and Adele was kind of, I felt like Adele was a little like, the silent auction, the silent auction. And I was like, okay, yeah, let's do that. And really, I just wanted to keep the paint. Yeah. I know. So I was, where is it? It's upstairs in my house. Oh my God. It's I very feel like nice. I'd get, I feel like I'd get yeah. scared seeing I was it. like, this bastard got me because like I was busy this talking bastard. to, I was busy talking to people and I was like, th I was actively thinking in my head and this is how the night ended, but, uh, and it's all good. I'm over it. You know, it was just funny. Cause I was thinking in my head as I was going around, like, okay, this is great. Thanks for talking to me people, but I need to talk to who I need to talk to, to put a bid in. Cause I don't think anyone's putting a bid in. And then when Tony was <laughs> like, all right, it's mine. You know, this is what I wanted. I was like, I want a bid. And he's like, it's silent auctions over. <laughs> Which was cool. It's fine. It was funny. You know, it was over with. But I remember thinking, like, I need to, I, I don't know who I need to talk to, but I just need to throw a bit in so I can get, because I love the painting. Alex, Alex, Ta or yeah, Alex Shyla. Tackett. Yes. Shyla. She uh, is also an amazing uh, artist, and she Absolutely. she painted this picture. And I was like, I already have one painting it's of me it, it makes it also makes a, great. a premiere or a debut, <laughs> a little in, cameo. A debut in the movie <laughs> it's perfect it fits with my self-deprecating humor that i my therapist <laughs> said i should shy away from but but we we managed to get it into the movie no it's i think that's the opposite of self-deprecating you were like i'm gonna put my phone no that was me i was like i'm oh. put i'm putting this painting of dave oh. in there and i'm glad you and did. a painting of mm -hmm. me and Celinda because yeah. I, i'm the egotistical one of the group for sure yeah. but we know like, oh, look at this funny little thing i'm such a clever little director with pink paintings yeah. of me and Celinda and dave in our and because it, it has nothing to do with with like the plot i can say that when my picture comes up the line is used that just looks like a waste of of paint, paint supplies, paint supplies. <laughs> that that's why i, I meant even... by like the, <laughs> like the self-deprecating part, like Tony's is up and you're, she's just, you're just looking at it. And then she's like, that just looks like, you know, a waste of paint supplies. I'm like, yes. That is so funny. Cause I literally didn't even put that together until like, I obviously I knew that was the scene, but I wasn't even putting together that like, she's degrading, <laughs> degrading me. a picture of you, <laughs> like an actual picture of you. Yeah. And I never put that together until so funny. Right this moment. Oh, that shows how involved. No, I was very involved. I you were super involved. I was super involved. I just didn't really put that together. No, they were. Yeah. They, I like that we were able to incorporate quite a few clever little things into the movie that, like, you'll notice if you pay attention or if you like watch it a second time or like certain stuff or if you know us or whatever. That's the one thing that, like, the next time we make a movie, just because like the way that we shot it things were so tight and we had to focus on like the acting and making sure we got all the shots in like such a tight frame the next time we do this uh, we got to <laughs> give ourselves time to like throw things in on the fly like you know because there was things that we had discussed like putting in that you know were non-verbal that was just stuff going around in the in the setting that we didn't get around to and right. we still it was still an awesome job but we were just like on such a tight timeline that we didn't 
have the opportunity to like do extra stuff. Right. 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 Yeah. Like it, it kills me a little bit that, which I'm, I'm trying to say this without giving anything away. There's a part. <laughs> <laughs> a part in the movie. There's a part in the movie where there is a note written on something, but you can't see what it says. Yeah. And that drives me nuts. Because I feel like that was kind of like a huge. Yeah. And you don't get to see what it says. Yeah, it's hard. I mean, I you can but read it, but like you need a magnifying glass probably or mm. like something bigger. That was like one of the other like challenges we kind of had to figure out was how we were going to do that particular scene and how right. we were going to make that note visible for the audience and what we would do to, to make that happen. It's funny because like the in the original script it was different and it was funny because some of the criticism that i did get that i will bring up here from people was like oh why didn't you do this a b and c and it was like well again shoestring budget a b we don't have the money we didn't have the money or the permission to destroy a house you know yeah. what I'm saying? Right. Like, why didn't you do it this way? Well, we th we wanted originally to. that we was how it was home. written in the script. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Oh my god, I'm like forgetting. Was it what just was like, the... damn it, write it on a wall? Yeah, and like was... big on a wall somewhere, and then it was like, well, how? Well, are... this isn't our home. So yeah. We Unfortunately, we were given permission to to film there, which is incredibly nice. Right. And we're very grateful to the people that let us film at the house. Um, unfortunately, they I do not believe they would have given us permission <laughs> had I asked if we could write a big note in red paint in on lipstick. the wall. <laughs> right. Yeah. And like the other stuff would have involved like literally like destroying parts of the house like yeah. why didn't this happen well you know that if if we get picked up and we're able to like make like a hollywood budget movie watch out because we'll right. do it the way that we wanted to right right, right. Yeah. yeah there were a few different sacrifices like that too yeah it just had and a few happen. that we had to like figure out on the fly like because of the the space that we were able to get Right. I actually, I think it was really cool that, like, we rented an Airbnb and it, she literally is renting an Airbnb. Like, yeah. Like, it was real life and in the movie. It was very, very meta. It yeah. It was very meta. Yeah. And there were weird things that happened the whole time. Well, maybe not happened the whole time, but, like, there were some weird fucking things that we ended up incorporating into the movie that I thought were really cool. Oh, mm -hmm. yes. Like the coffee mug we found with right. a K on it. That was your coffee mug. Oh. Yeah, I forgot about that. And there was another well, thing too, but that uh, we can't talk about. Yeah, that. we can't, can't talk, talk about, about that. that. Yeah, we all but, know what it is, but yeah, no. that was wild. It Ugh. was creepy. That that's like the one thing that will always give me chills when I watch that. I'm like, okay, that was that was a creepy. Yeah. That was yeah. a good. That was a cool sequence too that we put together for that. Yeah. Like a lot of the stuff, I was entirely overconfident in being able to do and i'm uh happy that they were able to work out afterwards you know what i mean because i'm like oh yeah this is gonna be fucking awesome dude here we go we're doing it and then we do it and then like maybe the next day before i get to those scenes i'm like oh my fucking god what the fuck did I <laughs> what the fuck did i just do what am i piecing together right now like why is my life like this why did i think this was gonna be so easy i had so many fucking moments like that <laughs> throughout this whole process especially when it came to editing where i was like what the fuck was I like? What, what the I fuck for, am I yeah. doing? What did I like? How did I think I was going to do this? Why are we going to make this work? And there were a lot of like small things in my camera work. Jesse's camera work was all fucking perfect and spot on because he's a genius. Um, but there were a lot of things that I had to like crop in a little bit mm. to make sure that certain things weren't in oh. certain shots you know what i mean because they were like in the shots like we'd have a boom over here we'd have a cord or a light or something oh. or like a corner of a tripod in a shot and it's luckily they weren't like in the middle of the shot so i could just like tighten it oh, that's good. a little bit you know what i mean but there were a lot uh, maybe not a lot but there were definitely like three things that immediately jumped to my mind that i had to like crop in a little bit because right. there was shit there but that was also like because we were in a pretty small space. You know what I mean? We didn't have a, a fucking studio. We had a small Airbnb, Airbnb yeah. that we rented. Which was very, very quaint, very cute. It was it, cozy. It was, it was perfect for what it was supposed to be for. Yeah, exactly. You know? Which it's so funny, like, you know, not knowing. 
<laughs> until we were filming what house Kara lived in. Right. And I was like, get the fuck out. This is where I'm coming from this house to this house. Yeah. Because I thought the Airbnb, because I mean, I, I'm. The Airbnb is like I, normal. Because like, I'm not a wealthy person. There. So like, I'm like, this is great. And then I saw where I'm supposedly supposed to be coming from. And I was like. This is not real life. Yeah, this thank is a you, house Jesse I, and Adam. Yeah, your yeah. your house is unreal. Um, Did she show you inside? Um, Did she I, give you a tour? No, we we just um, I didn't want to impose because I felt I felt already like just like thank oh, you I'm for sure letting me have. like be on your property. I'm sure she would have loved <laughs> to show you around. <laughs> but no, I just was in like the first walkway and I was just like, holy shit. Yeah. But I try not to do that in front of like really wealthy people because I don't want to show off like how poor. I am. <laughs> No, but, like, oh my god they're the sweetest people ever they're honestly so i, I love them both to death i really appreciate them letting us use their space and it yeah. is a beautiful home when you said it was nice like i had no idea until i pulled in that literally like my heart dropped i was like this is a house this yeah is, this isn't a hotel like mm. what yeah I mean, it looks unreal. like it could be an apartment complex yes. in the movie yeah. yeah, like a really yeah. <laughs> well looks, done, guys. You, very wow. well done. They're well killing done. it. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 it it does look like it could be like an apartment complex when we have like a like a shot of the house. It looks right. like it could be like five houses probably, or a million apartments, or however many. You know, well, people yeah. want to imagine it. Well, and that was why you know when when you guys kind of t told me more about her being you know so wealthy Kara being so wealthy she got and that making, youtube money right yeah like we broke that youtube money that's why i was so adamant on like her being likable on screen and then showing her true self af afterwards because right. i'm like if this chick was just like a bitch online like i feel like people wouldn't nobody be, would like, want to watch her yeah like they wouldn't want to watch this chick like you know that's how i i, I knew that we, we you guys had you know different we all had different ideas for that but i i had i was so stuck on that because i'm like no like she's got to be fake as fuck like right. this girl has to be so likable yeah and, i mean her know. first video made i i remember calculating it out. it was like thirty five thousand dollars or something like that or like i don't know oh yeah, yeah. oh like, like seven thousand dollars off her first video or something like that how many was it fifty thousand views I or a hundred thousand views subs I it was hundred thousand views and fifty thousand subs so hundred thousand yeah. views seven dollars per thousand is like seven thousand dollars yeah, while, off one video while we're going through it, and like again, we and didn't. that's with just one ad. So if there were like right. three ads in the video, that's like twenty one thousand dollars. We gotta if if we end up reshooting it, and not that only be if like we got like the money or like the interest to do it. Like, I'd want to get like a, a replica of like one of those like YouTube things they give like a to plaque. people. Yeah, that oh, yeah, because like every million subscribers, yeah. every single yeah. YouTube personality that has hit that mark has that in the background mm -hmm. of their videos uh yep i think like awesome it was an awesome place we shot at um if we got to do it again and like had like more resources that we could like grease someone's palms or whatever to, to convince them to let us shoot at their place like i would have liked maybe like a bigger airbnb just because well, she had like money you know that was like right. originally originally the plan was to find like a lake house on exactly chautauqua, you exactly know what I mean? right and then we're looking i'm looking at like lake houses on chautauqua and i'm like oh fuck three hundred dollars a night three hundred dollars a night three hundred dollars a night and i was like i don't i don't yeah, know this if we can quite right. do that I don't know but i think it was good because it's like it shows like I mean, I, a what I took from it was that like, she obviously came from like humble beginnings. So this was supposed to be look kind of maybe look like the home she grew up in, you mm -hmm. know, like I thought it was kind of supposed to go. Plus she's also afraid her career is over. Right. Yeah. So there's so much you can take from that and be like, well, this is why, you know, um, yeah. Yeah. If I thought my career was over, I wouldn't be like, I'm going to spend all my money on an Airbnb and just a fancy Airbnb for two months to get away from it all. Yeah. Right. Probably not my first right. move. If I think that like, I'm about to lose everything. Cause obviously if I'm living here, I've been spending that money right. that I've been getting and not, uh, saving it, you know? Right. right. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, it's a, a creative, you know? Yeah. I thought of something today when I was I was working and I knew we were doing this tonight. I was trying to think of something that I never asked you. What the fuck happened to Kara's mom? It's insignificant. <laughs> <laughs> it's insignificant. She's she's dead. 
she's dead. dead. She's dead I or didn't... she's dead or out of the picture. Here's the thing is I didn't know if you had like a backstory that you never like shared. I before. had a backstory, but when it comes down to it, like I wrote the backstory, but when it comes down to it, 10 to 20 minute movie, I still, you know, managed to what I gave was 47 minutes. <laughs> so they, so like I was like, "Mom, okay, she gone. is gone. gone. We're not gone. even going to talk Mom. about her because, like, she is going to be insignificant to this. So we can't add yeah. any more time. There was also, um, just because this has nothing to do with the movie when people watch it, there was also another character that I wrote in the original script, which was a therapist oh. for Kara. I remember Kara. talking about that. And oh. she had, like, this, like, intricate, like, relationship with uh, her sister, you know, the other people are in her life, but also a therapist that she was, like, working through with stuff oh. with. And it was, like, it just made the movie, like, it would have made the movie, like, a half hour longer. Right. Probably, yeah. No, that's, that's and cool it would have required, like, different locations, too. More right. than we already used. It was, like, things were, it, it just had to be cut. But, yeah, uh, in the in the original script, the mother is super dead. Super dead. She dead as fuck. Like, she's super dead. Like, maybe... Like wait, I'm the cancer. Like, I'm the youngest one, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Jess, yeah. my older sister. So I actually thought maybe about she, I, she died like in childbirth with me. It's funny because I was just about to say that that was like an original thought that I had to like build up the resentment, mm. the, you know, like issues yeah. more. But like, I you was, killed like, our mom. Yeah, you killed oh. our mom. Yeah, yeah, and our weren't there when our yeah when yeah, other, other stuff when, happened. When, when other stuff <laughs> happened. Yeah, exactly. And stop. Do right. you? Do you guys have, um, what was your favorite moment memory part of this experience? Mm, I'm going to let Tony go first. Uh, I liked the premiere. Like getting the payoff from all the hard work was uh, rewarding and nice. That's always my favorite part. Um, I Yeah, that's my favorite part. I'm, I'm not going to say any more than that. I can say stuff about the journey and that mm -hmm. being good and all the things that I've learned. And I guess I just did, but... Um, definitely the premiere was the best part for me. Um, I could say a million things. Uh, I mean, being, I mean, just having a camera in front of me and acting in front of a camera, you know, was the first time ever. So I felt super cool. Like that was really, really exciting. Um, getting, like I said earlier, getting to work on a project with Matt was really, really special for me. Um, and on equally special was getting to not only share well share literal scenes with one of my best friends and someone who's been acting for 20 plus years Adele Crotty who's phenomenal amazing and I'm so so honored and happy that she like I remember us you know knowing that we needed a sister and you know knowing that this was like all of our first time and she had like a ton of experience and I'm being like oh, is it like insulting if I ask her to do this? Like no offense, like to you guys, or even I just, you know, I thought she's done so much. Like, I don't know if she's going to want to give her time to like a new project that no one's ever worked on. And she was like, hell yeah, I'd love to be your sister. So I was just like, oh my God, this is going to be amazing. Like this is, I was just so, so thankful that she wanted to do this with she us. She has some so. super intense, powerful scenes too. Yes, she, yes, does. she does. And it's, yeah, it's, I was very honored to, cause she's been, you know, I've, been in her shows that she, and she's directed me but i've never actually acted with her before so mm -hmm. that was just like surreal to have like a camera on me and i'm like sitting on a couch with my one of my best friends and someone i really admire and look up to in the acting world and i just that was such a surreal cool moment for me i so, like yeah. i like here i got two things well the three things i'll make them quick one the relief when it was over <laughs> Oh my god! Because there was so that much was stress. So that's also part of why the premiere is my favorite part. Yeah. Two, and this is gonna sound kind of cheesy, but it's true. Like I love experiences that bring people together. Like I'm good friends with you. I'm good friends with you. Um, everybody else and Tommy as well. But like everybody else that was on that set, I didn't know quite as well. But it was like a bonding experience for everybody, which is like yeah. really cool. The third thing, this is kind of funny. So if you look at like the poster. It's like because her handle was Caranormal too, so it's at Caranormal. But on our social oh, yeah. media posts after the very first one, we just put Caranormal because on Instagram, 
we put it as at Caranormal, and the person with that handle was like, what is this? What is going on? Are you guys making a movie about me? It was hilarious. Oh, no, there is somebody. Who yeah. Actually- oh, yeah. No, she was super cool She was about super it. cool. She was like, I didn't know I was getting a movie made about me. Wait, like- was it the same lady that I sent you that video of that was like, I have the best trick-or-treating ha- no, no, it, it was, was just some a- random person with it- the name bo- at name. No at way. You never yeah. told me that. And we just decided after that, like, we're going to do this lady a service and uh, not put a space. tag her every yeah. single time. <laughs> put a space between the at and paranormal. <laughs> that was just oh funny. There were still times where she got tagged, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Does but she do, like, paranormal investigations? No. Or is she no. just, like, just like, I'm like a nor- into creepy stuff? She's like, just a normal girl. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And she was super cool, but I just, that was, like, a funny moment for me. Oh, that's hilarious. I yeah. did not know that. Yeah, that was funny. I, I liked that. The relief when it was all done was like oh, so nice. I I really didn't want to say that though when you, when you asked me, but like that was such a fucking nice thing. Yeah, once I was like awesome. done, re- once I like made the final cut and everything. After the final cut was done, I was just like I so fucking yeah. That's... Glad it was over and like over the movie in general. I'm like okay, I never want to touch this ever again. And it was funny because I'll say this, you know, it was funny because we like Tony and I looked at each other after everything was done and Tony was like, we're not going to do this again for a while. (laughs) We're not doing this for a little while. And then like two or I love it. I love the energy. But like two or three weeks later, he hit me up with ideas for the next project. And I was like, this man recovers fast. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) right. Production. I don't want to say production was a nightmare, but holy fuck, I was like, I, f- I have uh, seldom felt that level of anxiety and stress in my life, other than like that four days of production. That's yeah, that yeah, that's like I said, learning experience. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Next time for anything, need a lot more time for filming, for editing, for all. See, the editing things. and all the other stuff wasn't that bad. It was just like keep trying to keep track of all the shit. Yeah, and making I sure that imagine. we got all the scenes and stuff and dave was really helpful with that but like four days sun up sundown on uh is definitely not the way i want to do it again the next no. movie will be spaced out we'll do a bunch of different things what's funny okay. about that though is that like obviously i would have liked more time to be spent on it but like I loved, like, I lived for that. Like, that's why I was like, I want this on my birthday. <laughs> yeah. Like, I wanted to do, like, that is literally how I wanted to spend my birthday. Didn't want to spend it breaking my toe and spraining my ankle. But, 37. Um, but, yeah. Like, I, I lived for that. Just, like, I mean, as an actor, I'm sure it's completely different on the production no, side of I mean, things. don't get me wrong. I loved it as well. Mm-hmm. I had a great time. It was awesome to be able to do that. But, at the same time. I oh, sure think I had exhausting. like hummingbird levels of like heart palpitations, palpitations yeah. <laughs> most of the yeah. time. Um, but yeah. it was cool. It was great. I loved the production. Production was awesome. I just don't want to do four days like stressed out trying to get everything done. Four days right. in a row would have been okay. But if we would have had like more than enough time to like, because there were probably quite a few scenes where we could have done more takes and i think done better shit oh absolutely but uh, at the same time i was like okay this is this is okay because we need to move move on on. right you know what i mean and uh i was a little anxious about it too but for anybody out there who's becoming like super hardcore everything at once slash care normal super fans colleen and i are almost birthday twins our our birthdays are only a day apart so it was like my birthday weekend too it was our birthday yeah (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I don't celebrate birthday weeks, but like it, 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 it was the uh, it was the birthday weekend, so it was cool. Like we got to yeah. like spend our birthdays doing this cool project. Yeah, yeah it was I, sick. I loved that. And I, crap, I had something I wanted to say. No, I forgot. Ugh. Um. Oh, I think the reason I loved the the shooting, you know, day and night, just getting all those lines out, because my anxiety was all beforehand. Was me at home, like in like half the dark just (laughs) memorizing i mean i memorized that whole movie like Mm -hmm. i didn't have just my lines memorized i had everybody's lines memorized so i was like literally going insane with like having this movie in my head so to be like i'm I'm getting it out (laughs) not in this peewee voice but like getting it out and just being like oh fuck i don't have to say these words ever ever again like i that was such a relief yeah oh my god 
that yeah so uh and like trying to you know say things a certain way and you know make sure oh never mind i was gonna say something i feel like we did a pretty good job like uh we i had a pretty good idea of how we were going to keep track of everything but like actually keeping track of it and dave did most of that um was like incredibly frightening at the same time you know what I mean? Oh yeah. Like the the clipboard was like literally our fucking Jesus Bible. Like <laughs> everything sacred yeah. to us was on that to make sure that we got that whole thing done. Oh yeah, and the, I can't remember which scene, but there was definitely one scene where like it was either the first or second day where I was like, we did not do this, and everything was like such a blur. You know, uh, you know, someone was like, I think we did. And I was like, no, it's not on the clipboard. Like, yeah. I yeah. promise you, we mm -hmm. did not do this scene. Right. Yeah. There were a few things we missed anyway. Yeah, oh, there yeah. sure were. There were some fancy tricks pulled. And yeah, uh, yeah thank thank God. Yeah, because that would have been. Yeah. yeah, not not as special if, if you had not. Yeah, we, we, we did some that. fancy tricks and we did some other things that were necessary from because of like hiccups in production you know what i mean right and uh i'm grateful that we were able to get those accomplished and there's certain scene oh man i'm so sad about one particular scene that we like lost part of or I we lost like a camera of. shot mm -hmm. we lost like an angle of and oh man it was so it was so fucking good but uh that's okay because you live and you learn and you make mistakes and you grow and you you know we we made a fucking movie and it's still top tier in my book, right. especially for our first movie. Exactly. That's yeah. I believe the terminology in our industry, I can say our, cause we've done this now is that's showbiz baby. <laughs> that's showbiz baby. <laughs> right. It sure is Dave. <laughs> and we are a part of it. I had, uh, people that, uh, that I respect that make films and you're say, welcome to the club afterwards. So I was like, wow, oh, we did it. That made my heart. No, I like that. Yeah. And a lot of people that, like, a lot of, like, artists and people that I really respect, like, greatly had nothing, like, just, like, sang the praises of, of you and of us and of what we did, you know what I mean? Which I think was fucking incredible, you know what I mean? So many people really liked it. And so many yeah. people were like, this was a lot better than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> How many people did you have that said that? Maybe oh, I'm so many. I, well, I'm excited because I don't know when this will be released to the public but whenever that does happen i have plenty of people that are waiting to watch the movie yes so i will we're gonna tell get... everybody yeah. everybody that's been paying attention october 1st that we're, is it we're gonna go public with Paranormal on october 1st i don't know what day that is or anything right now but that's what we've decided since we got rejected by all the film competitions it's going on youtube for everybody to watch october 1st it's a tuesday that's a really exciting day because that is also the day that Sauce, the oh, vegan restaurant, shit. is is launching their app to uh, make your reservations. That's so, good to know. Uh, shout out to Sam Randall. I got to talk That's... to her, get her on the show too. Oh my God. Again. I'm so excited for yeah. her restaurant. For, so. Me too. For anybody that was listening at the very start, which you should have been, you better not have fast forwarded. <laughs> uh, it's it's the, the, the fecha is uh, uno de octubre. Yes. See. Fecha? Yeah, the date. Fecha. Fecha. Oh, fe oh, I'm, like, the fe I'm like, Fecha. That's Fecha. Ta taco. Jalapenos. <laughs> taco. Jalapenos. <laughs> Jalapenos. <laughs> yes. October 1st, it'll come out. You guys can all watch it. And Woo. you can be surprised at us being a lot better than anybody expected us to be. Mm hmm. They're like, I didn't expect, like, it was always like, I didn't think it was going to be bad, but I, I didn't think it was going to be this good. Either. Right. Well, I'm, I'm glad. I'm, I'm yeah. glad. I, that's the thing. I, I think I didn't, I, I, I think I was so afraid of criticism that I didn't ask for anyone's opinion. I was just like, did you see it? Okay. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> like, we, I was just like, how was it? Yeah. yeah. I didn't, I didn't ask anybody that. I, I was just like, we have one friend that was there that is just very, very blunt. And he okay. was like, you never told me what he said. He was like. It might not have been the same one, but he was oh. just like, I'll be honest. He was like, I came out because you guys are my friends, like Tony and I. He was like, I was expecting an E movie, maybe a D movie at best. <laughs> he was like, but this is like a B movie. Like, this is a passable, like, you know, B movie. And I was like, thank you for being honest. Like, you didn't have to say this was an A plus movie. Right. Who yeah. directed this? Steven Spielberg, you <laughs> know. Uh, but he was like, this is like a B movie. Like, this is. And I was like, no, that's, a compliment. that's good. That was a compliment. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. Absolutely. So. 
Yeah, if D's get degrees, then B's make honor roll, baby. Yeah. I was pumped to get a B in high school. I'll Fuck tell, yeah. I'll, I'll tell That's you what. Right. <laughs> That's right. No. But it's been fun catching back up with you. Yeah. Yes. Colleen. Thank I almost you called you Kara. Oh. Kara. Kara. Call, call, me, call me whatever you want. Oh my God. So my, sorry, I'm just going to, I'm really, anno- I'm being really annoying right now because I played a character on um, the boat show that Adele Crotty uh, uh, directs and writes and uh, we do on the Victorian Princess every year. And I don't know if any of you watch Shit's Creek, but. Um, my character was basically just completely copying off Alexis Rose. So I've just nice. been like, talk- have just been talking like this <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> for an entire summer and like doing all of her little, uh, so I've just accidentally been talking like that. So I'm, I feel really annoying. Right well, no, oh, David. <laughs> I'm just so in character. Well, Ew, David. <laughs> well, I'll say this on my end to end this. Maybe we haven't done one in a while, so it, it we might not, but if we go back to, am I the asshole? Halloween, that's oh, your shit, plot. dude. So, yes. so either for Halloween you could dress up like her, or by then maybe you'll be over. It. <laughs> uh, uh, and I, I feel like that is so ingrained in me; I, it, it'll never go away. Um, I well, feel I like mean, she dresses like you probably normally dress, though. Kind it, of. It, it wasn't hard to put a costume together. Yeah. I'll put it that way. Um, Moira is yeah. my favorite in that show, though. Oh God, yeah. Well, that's why it was seeing Beetlejuice <laughs> again was so exciting. I, I it, know, right? It, it was, took me like so long to remember her name. I like watched it and I was like, "She's in Shit's Creek. She's the mom. What the fuck was her Ka- name?" Yes, Catherine Moira. Moira. Oh, Moira. Yeah. Well, I thought it was so funny just to hear her actual voice because I was I just kept waiting to hear little like Moira like. Like she was yeah. just gonna throw like little, little and she's super weird in Beetlejuice too, and I just I, mean, right. I love it. Oh, Catherine O'Hara, here for it, phenomenal. Yeah, sorry, going on a little Beetlejuice tangent. Yeah, Halloween, maybe yeah. we could all dress up like Beetlejuice people. I don't know. Fuck it, yeah. we'll figure it out when we get there. And uh, yeah, I'll have I don't to know. Watch Beetlejuice. Check first. out Paranormal. Yeah. P- put it in your calendars. October first, it's coming out. Y'all are gonna on, love it. How on are they YouTube. gonna watch it? YouTube. Okay. I'll I'll have a link or whatever for you on October first when the movie comes out, and uh, it's gonna be amazing. It'll impress you. You'll be surprised at how good it is, especially for the people that aren't expecting much. So, uh, and I will be practicing my Michael Keaton uh, voice for the Halloween episode. That's what I'm gonna do. But go check out Paranormal when it yes. comes out. Check it out October first. That's right. Y'all are amazing. Thank you so much. And have a good night, everybody. Peace out.